risk management framework in banks. Risks. Here we define the different risks, which are mostly financial risk. We will try to explain cash flow. We will explain the relationship between risk and capital. We'll also explain the relationship between risk and returns. So first, risk, financial risks. Financial risks are worries, fears and uncertainties resulting in adverse variations of profitability or loss. Risk elements are factors that are responsible for creating worries in cash outflow or cash inflow. What impacts the net cash flow of any business or investment is worries associated with risk elements. There could also be favorable or unfavorable impact of uncertainties or worries. The possible unfavorable impact on the business is the risk of the business. So it means zero risk means there is no impact on the net cash flow. However, risk on zero risk investment would be low when in comparison to opportunities which are available in the market. Next is uh, some explanations we try to do for cash flow. So consider a trading business of supplies involving getting raw materials from different suppliers and reselling them to customers. So here the cash inflow is from returns that are from customers and cash outflow is the purchase price of raw materials from the suppliers. So cash flow may be cash inflow and cash outflow and may result out of raw material costs as well as returns that are enjoyed from customers. Uh, and uh, we have also seen that the cumulative addition of this uh, results in a lot of fund flows we analyze them uh, using the different fund flow mechanisms uh, in some of the uh, uh, sessions which we have discussed uh, in relation to ratio analysis. So try to uh, see that session and understand how cash inflows and cash outflows and how these explanations fit well into the overall schema. Next, we'll try to see the relationship between risk and capital. So banks capital, as you know, is the difference between banks assets and liabilities. It may include cash, government securities and loans. So here, what is capital is the money kept by a client or customer in a bank in the case of a banking business. So in simple terms, minimum capital required by a business is the maximum loss that may arise from the business so that a bankruptcy is avoided. So generally, a business with a large variation in net cash flow bears a higher risk, which would mean higher profit potential and loss probabilities. Also, automatically, capital requirement for such a business may remain high over to the higher risks or probabilities of higher losses. Hence, one should say for a business with higher variations in net cash flow, the capital requirements remains high and for a business with low variation in net cash flow, the capital requirements remain lower. So that is the relationship between risk and capital. What about risk and returns? So returns expected from a business is in relation to risk associated with that business. For instance, let us consider two business, business A and business B. Both business A and business B have equal return on investment. However, if business A has a steady stream of cash flow in comparison to business B that has a risky st stream of cash flow, one cannot compare them based on return on investment because in some cases it may be equal as we may not get an accurate picture of on the risk associated with them. So in such cases, what, what do we do? We actually say, so in such cases, since the risk needs to be compared, we consider RAROC or RAROC or risk adjusted return on capital and one say higher RAROC for a project uh, or risk adjusted return on capital for a project here project B higher is the reward for investors or shareholders and higher remains the market preference given to such projects. Also return on equity is also another metric since it does not capture risk on an income model is not quite reliable in any investment decisions made in, in any investment decision making process. So that is the relationship between risk and returns. 
Next, we'll see what is risk management framework. The basic risk management framework, it is seen that it, uh, it unifies risk organization, it unifies risk identification, it unifies risk measurement, risk pricing, risk monitoring and control, and risk mitigation. We'll briefly go through how it unifies, what is the relevance of each of those sections uh, in the coming session, okay? So first we'll take a look at basic risk measurement framework. So you should understand that basic risk measurement framework is normally a question of taking an even or balanced view on risk and returns within the limits of available capital. Identification of risks and quantification of risk are mainly involved when one starts to manage risk. Hence, risk identification and measuring becomes important and is the only way one can accept risk or mitigate it completely or partially. Also, whenever higher risks are involved in a transaction, higher would be the price of such transactions bound in general to the risk content of the transactions. So first we'll take uh, the risk management framework, the basic risk management framework. We will see how it unifies risk organization. So for us to be able to see that, so unifying risk organization, we should know what a risk management organization is comprised of. So it, it is comprised of board of directors. It has a risk management committee, senior level executives and support group. So what are the functions of, of them actually in a risk organization? Board of directors has the overall responsibility of the risk management projects, risk policies, procedures and review mechanisms which are articulated by board of directors. They also limit for various risks that are identified across or in the organization. So that is about the responsibility of board of directors. Now, what about risk management committee? Board level subcommittees are responsible for ensuring that risk management processes conform to a risk policy. It also sets up prudential limits on risk as well as subject risk management to a periodic review. What about senior level executives? What do they do? They are responsible for implementation of risks and business policies so that there exist achievements of consistency across the different platforms and achievements of set objectives. In, on the other hand, the support group or the risk support group does analysis and reporting and monitoring of the different risk profiles to the senior executives. They are responsible for monitoring, measuring, analysis and reporting of the risks and examine changes in market variables. So that is how a unified risk organization works. Now, next is risk identification. How do we unify risk identification as part of, uh, we have already seen that as part of risk management framework. So how do we have already gone through risk organization. Next is risk identification. How do we unify, how, how does the risk management framework unifies risk identification? So risk identified belongs to one of liquidity risk, market risk, interest rate risk, credit or default risk and operational risk. So normally the risk identified belongs to this and all these risks are dealt in a, at a transactional level. However, liquidity risk as well as interest rate risk are dealt in a portfolio level also. Credit risk, market risk and operational risk are dealt both at transactional level and as well as at portfolio level. Now aggregate risk such as credit, market and operational determines capital needs and hence guidance for risk taking should come from a corporate level. So in order to explain risk identification, we consider a scenario. So this is the scenario. Bank branch extends a loan of rupees 20 million, which is true 2 crores on a BPLR base prime lending rate of 10%. Funding for this is from deposit amount of 4 years of same amount at interest rate 6%. So what are the different uh, risks associated with us with this scenario? We see there is basis risk, funding risk, gap or mismatch risk and reinvestment risk. So we'll just see what are the different types of risks associated with the, this scenario. So basis risk, what exactly is that? 
So since interest rate of the deposit account is carrying a fixed rate of interest and loan account is BPLR and if BPLR is reduced in the first three years basis risk would emerge. So there is base prime lending rate of 10% that's why during the first three years basis risk would emerge. Now what about funding risk? Since deposit amount or account which is currently linked is only for three years, after that period funding risk would be there. Gap and mismatch risk. After three years, the deposit rate may not remain the same for the new deposit account that may have to be linked to the loan account. So this gives rise to gap or mismatch risk. There also is reinvestment risk Why, when there is when it is applicable. So as the loan gets repaid, the amount needs to be reinvested, but on what interest rate is ambiguous. We don't know what interest rate the loan can be again reinvested. So at that time or unknown at the present time. So this may give rise to reinvestment risk. So that is uh, a gist of uh, how we unify risk identification, uh, which is under basic risk measure management framework. So next is uh, risk measurement. What are the, how we unify risk measurement? What are the classifications of risk measurement? So risk measurements are mostly quantitative and may be classified as belonging to quantitative measurement based on sensitivity, quantitative measurement based on volatility and quantitative measurement based on downside potential. So on sensitivity, it captures deviation of the target variable to a unit movement in market potential. Only the market variables that drive the target variables are taken into consideration in this quantitative measurement of sensitivity. Now next is about volatility. What is captured is the stability or instability characteristic of any random variable. So that is uh, based upon which the classification exists for volatility. For downside potential, it only considers any possible losses or any possible downward deviation of the target variable. So that, has, that are the classifications and this is how it helps unify risk measurement. Now next is unifying risk pricing. So risk pricing depends upon cost of funds deployed, loss probabilities, operating expenses and capital charge. Now uh, risk pricing enables making sure risks are accounted for in pricing through a mechanism of loss probability and capital charge. Now actual costs are accounted for costs of funds as well as service cost. Risk pricing therefore depends upon cost of funds deployed, loss probability, operating expense and capital charge. So that is about risk pricing. Next is how do we unify risk monitoring? So it's a combined effort of bank senior management, board of directors, board committee on risk management. Together, they receive reports on bank's risk profile and capital needs. Together, they also make sure reasonableness of bank's assessment process in stress testing and analysis of assumptions as part of risk monitoring purposes. So based upon that, the senior management evaluates sensitivity and reasonableness of key uh, uh, key assumptions and evaluates the trends and levels of material risks and their impact on capital assets. The board of directors, according to an internal policy, makes sure adequate and prudent controls are in place in the business. Bank's internal control makes sure an independent review process happens along with external and internal audit. And lastly, unifying risk mitigation. What is risk mitigation? Risk mitigation happens when one reduces the uncertainties or worry factors associated with risk elements. Risk mitigation reduces the variability in net cash flow. It also measures and reduces downside variability in net cash flow. So for a trading business, this might mean ensuring that there is a contact mechanism in place and in making sure there exists counterparty responsible for each transaction. Risk mitigation is also achieved through diversification and portfolio risk. So with this, we come to a conclusion on risk management framework in banks. So we have almost explained the basic, finance, basic risks as well as basic risk management framework which exists in banks.
Thanks.